I'm just going to um, uh, make sure that you all know we're now uh, with Dr. Kevin Washington, who's the president of the Association of Black Psychologists and senior pastor at Imani Temple here in Washington, D.C. Uh, Dr. Washington, take it away. All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is, a, uh, it is a challenge to have this conversation now that we've had all these prolific uh, speakers, right? And now you all have been sitting here in this cave, in this dungeon, very cold. Uh, but uh, we're very excited. It was <laughs> yeah, but it's freezing in this camp. Um, so I thank you all for, my fingers got cold, so I don't know. But I am awake, though. i clear about that. And the, uh, the topic that, that we're discussing is very, um, is very uh, timely, right? The, the idea of how do you understand uh, mental health of a population uh, that has uh, incurred so many uh, challenges and how do you deal with the challenges of the, of the paradoxes? I think it was a very powerful piece that was just presented how Benjamin Rush suggested that, uh, that the suffrage of black people was a, was a function of their skin color. And that uh, he was an abolitionist. He did, uh, he, he did sympathize with enslavement. And the, and the narrative was that he said that if they could just simply uh, turn white, they'd be OK. And then, uh, so we say that, well, Russ, what are you really talking about? Well, he, he was assuming at some level that if you could somehow remove the thing that's causing you your problem, you'd be all right. But the reality is that it was not the skin that was a problem. It was the ideology that was a problem. It's the way that he thought that was a problem. All right, y'all got to get to wake up. Y'all got to catch this. Because, because if, you, if, you, if you hear ben, uh, Bob Marley, he says that Sheriff Brown always hated me for what I don't know. He said, every time I planted a seed, he said, kill it before it grows. And then he says, therefore, I shot, I shot him down. You got to understand that, that, that what Rush was pr proposing and what... And what uh, many are saying today are the same exact narrative. They are suggesting that there's a space that exists that is dehumanizing the population. And how easily do we identify with the oppressor's linguistic expression? And we use the word that you mentioned about slave. And we have a problem with the idea of slave because when you identify with slave, he says that you are zero. I love that. That was eloquent, right? Because to be, to be called a slave means you have no identity whatsoever. It means that you are at the servitude of someone else. In reality, a slave is created because there is someone called a slave master. And so when you talk about then uh, people being enslaved, then it's about the issue of, of enslavement or being captives. And then we're talking about the, later on talking about this idea of, of human trafficking, then enslavement is about human trafficking. And human trafficking means that there is a process of pain and dehumanization that goes along with that particular process of in, uh, human trafficking. And so we're talking then uh, not about an, a, a moment of traumatic experiences. We're talking about historical and cultural trauma, which is why we can't even talk about post-traumatic stress disorder. We talk about people of African ancestry. Because if, it's, if it is about uh, post-traumatic, and post means that we are out of it, we've gone beyond it. The reality is that if we continue to experience it over and over again, it is persistent, and so therefore, we can't have a post-moment. You can't do uh, a therapy on someone in the trenches uh, when they're, when they're at, in, in war, and, and, and you tell them, asking them, how does it make you feel, and bullets are flying over your head. You can't do therapy. It doesn't work. Because you're in the middle of the moment, and so what we recognize is that we are in the middle of a moment, and we ask the question, uh, uh, is there something wrong with the mental health of black folks? And we would submit that, yes, there are some things that are, are wrong with us. There's a whole lot of things that are, are wrong. That matter of the whole lot of, should, should be some mo things, S-U-M-O, <laughs> things wrong with the population based on what one has experienced generation after generation after generation. Right, but the real check is not the issue of trying to understand the people that are trying to survive this, this horrific condition, but the reality is understanding those who continue to met out these kind of conditions and then call it normal. Exactly. The idea is that when one begins to speak out and suggest that uh, I can't breathe, they come back and say we can breathe. When somebody comes and says that Black Lives Matter, they, they, they say that all lives matter. 
And, and so every time there is a conversation, there is a countering to our conversation. That is a psychologically dehumanizing process as well. And so who are those people that can sit around and stand around and watch somebody being lynched and celebrate that entire process, can cut off body parts and disseminate them among people that are standing there and then say we had a picnic today? Think about what that means. So when we talk about this idea of mental health and mental wellness, we got to recognize that we all sick in this piece. There's some fundamental sickness that's going on that everybody got to check themselves. Uh, and, and don't get mad with me because I'm responding to your situation. That's a whole other piece right there. I think this ain't even part of my discussion. I don't know how I got on this point right here. Preach. Preach. This was not even where I intended to go. That's the past in you. That's the past in you. But the idea of, of somehow when I respond to what's happened to me, I'm problematic. How is it that you can step on my toe and I say, ouch, and I'm the problem? Right? And so we are stuck in this process of trying to navigate a space, trying to find ways to, to leverage something, to begin to address challenges that, that we face, and we just can't figure out how to do it. And all of a sudden, when somebody stands up and says, I will show you how to deal with it, we want to say that they have issues. Yes, there are issues that we all have. There are people in my family that I've seen do some very strange things. You were correct, Elijah Cummings, that that's how I got into psychology is because I saw certain things and I wanted to answer those questions. And then uh, there are other things that I wanted to respond to. And the thing that I wanted to respond to is, what is it about black folks that makes them to be able to find ways to navigate a space and maintain some level of sanity in the entire process of an insane situation. How is it that you can take some pig guts and you can make them into chitlins? I want to understand that. For, <laughs> for me, that, 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 that's, that's where you can find some, some fundamental wellness because you can find something and you can turn nothing into something. I want to understand that. And so we need to understand that when we talk about treatment, we can't apply this, this treatment modality from a European perspective and expect somehow that we're going to address the challenges of, of our folks, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this, right? We, so, so we said, how do I get over the stigma? If a part of my problem is a function of European racism and you, uh, and you are talking and acting like Europeans, then why in the hell am I going to come to you for some help? You can't help me. <laughs> Right, because you are advancing the same thing that's causing me some problems. So don't set the top of stigma. Yes, there's some stigmas. The other thing is that is, is that, that I can't be crazy again. I can't. First of all, I don't want you to tell me that I'm crazy, but I can't even exist in a space and be crazy. I, I got too much stuff to do to stop and be crazy right now. Is <laughs> that making sense? I'll be crazy tomorrow, but right now I got to handle. <laughs> these things. And you all presented, right, the idea of, of, of economics. And we mentioned the idea of the relationship between economics and, 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 and mental illness. And there is a connection, and I, and I have plenty of research about that. And the issue is that everybody knows that when your money is funny, your change is strange, you don't think right. right. Things just don't happen. And so there's not a population that desire to be in poverty. There's a condition of institutionalized racism that has impoverished the population, and therefore, people are trying to react against that thing that's struggling against them, right? So, so you, have, you have your foot on my neck, and then you're strangling me, and then telling me somehow that I'm choking. <laughs> You've clipped the wings, and then say that you can't fly. You've broken my legs, and then say I can't walk. Then you ask me somehow that, that how, what, what, what's wrong with me? Watch this idea of uh, this process of, of how people can, can, can castigate a population without even touching them. Yeah. Black people have watched a president that looked like them go through all the gyrations that people say that if you just simply do these things, you will be okay. If you go to these right schools and you talk a certain way, if you act a certain way, get the certain degrees, everything will be okay, but every move he's made. Not, not just some moves. Can we, I'm in D.C. early. Every move that he makes, he moves one way, he's acting arrogant, he doesn't talk, he's being passive, he, 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 move, he, 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 he has an executive order, he's abusing power, he, right? everything that he has done, there's been a conversation against him. Now, I am not one that's speaking on politics. 
I'm a black man observing phenomena. And what I see is that there's a phenomena that even if you suggest to me that this is the greatest country in the entire world, most powerful place that I can be, and yet this person has gone through everything that is supposed to be possible to make him okay, and he doesn't have enough, he can't do enough, he can't run fast enough, he can't jump high enough, he can't speak, everything, and then even when he speaks well, it becomes the issue of, uh, 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 he, 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 a very articulate man. He's a great speaker. Why are you hating? Because the man can put things together. As a man that was before him talking about we're going to hunt him down. We're going to smoke him out. Right? <laughs> so... So what we have then are people, and I listen to black males, I do groups with black males, and I, I listen, I just came from a barber, we were talking about certain things, and they're seeing these things, these things will make you go crazy. That's what he says, y'all gonna make me lose my, it's what say, I'm aware enough that y'all gonna make me go all out up in here, right? That's an issue that I'm recognizing. So when we talk about doing the work, we have to find ways to liberate the funds that's going to be able to allow us to address the issues. The issues have to be able to speak to our particular rise in a context of who we are as a people. We cannot utilize European thoughts and modalities to make things happen. This young man was visiting President Barack Obama during his first administration, uh, and he at Baltimore asked the question, is your hair like mine? Right, of all the questions that he could have asked, he could have asked the question, where is Bo? I think Bo's a dog, right? That's, that seems, that seems like, a, like a boy question, right? Um, he, could have, he could have said, you know, where is Sasha and Malaya? Let me holler at him for a minute, right? A lot of things he could have asked. But his idea, what you said about the existentialism, his existential question was, is, your, is my hair like yours, that I have learned at by the age of four or five that something about me is, uh, is, 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 is distorted, it, it, it is, is problematic, and if it is a problem for me, then I need to find out that if you are this president, do you have the same thing? Because maybe I can figure out how to change some stuff because right now I don't believe I have any worth and value. This is at, at three or four years old. So don't think that somehow somebody becomes, becomes get to get to Dr. Lawson, uh, they uh, uh, become 20 and have show signs of schizophrenia. I'm having some problems right here, right now. The work that we're doing has to be about socialization of black children, it has to be about reaffirming who they are, identity, have to be able to be able to tell them that there is a war that has happened, have to be able to tell them, as you say, that the war is on and the hunt is on you to pray, have to be able to talk about the caste system. The U.S. has two point three million people in prison. Pause. China has one point six million people in prison. Which population? Ha which, which, which country has the greatest popula population? England has eighty-seven thousand people in prison. This is not me talking. This is just some data that I collect. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. So we talk about the prison industrial complex. There's a process by which people are engaging in that perpetuation of enslavement experience through incarceration. If I can find ways to oppress you and look at, listen to this right here. Fetty Wap talks about, no, you're not talking about Fetty Wap, did you? <laughs> <laughs> trying to, somebody else in here knows who Fetty Wap is. If you don't know who Fetty, He says, he says that, that he's making pies with his baby. Is that right? Am I right? Help me out, Fetty. Come, come on up. Don't look. Don't look off now. I need you as a resource. <laughs> he's like, I don't listen to music. Fabrication, fabrication, fabrication. <laughs> I got a 13-year-old, 18-year-old daughter. I am listening to this stuff all the time. And he says that He's making, my youngest daughter said, Daddy, he's, he's talking about pies. I said, no, he's talking about, he's talking about, he's making contraband in bandos. I thought bandos at first was band of money, right? Bandos are band in houses, right? And so he talked, I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And as I listen to the song, he's talking about making country, and the question becomes, and mind you, again, I talk about this, Fetty Wap had four songs in the top 10 at one time that had never been done in history of music. So he's doing this, and so as he talks about this, he's talking about country band, and the question is, how would you, there are a lot of things that you cannot say on the radio. The word nigga is one of them. Thank you. Did I say that? Yeah. But he can talk about country band settling down in abandoned houses, squatter, prostituting out someone, and this is a song that is moved as, as, as simply a song that we can, we can listen to and, and say that it's okay music, right? Thank you. And I'm not against Fetty Wap, don't get me wrong, I admire that process. But what I am saying is that who is making the decision to allow this particular nomenclature to become normalized in the population if you do not have an agenda? The agenda would be that if you can begin to suggest that this is somehow a normalized process of, of what it means to be black, I'm going to either get you strung out or I'm going to get you arrested, attorney. And so I'm going to have you incarcerated because I need you to believe that this is a part of who you really are. But we as the healers must be able to say that, yes, this is what, this is what some folks do. However, you were greater than this. Understand that there were Jim Crow laws. Understand that there were black codes. Understand that, that even today the same stuff is happening. Understand that, you mentioned this is very, very, very good. You said that, that, that Wilson said that when I saw it, it looked like, right? He said he felt like Hulk Hogan. He felt like a child, but it. Who is the it? He's, it looked like a demon. Who is the it that he's talking about? He's talking about another human being. How did he get to see, see a, a, a human being as an it? Because they were never human in the first place. How does it get perpetuated? Well, uh, LeBron James, uh, uh, they talked last night on the SP Awards, which was really good stuff. How, the idea of the image iconography, these things that happen, how does the idea of the hood become an identification of the way that I could be, I could be uh, annihilated, right? And the hood at one point symbolizes, that's not, that's not, not, not the clan, by the way. That's a spiritual, that, that, that's an Easter celebration going on right there. And then those are monks, those are spiritual, holy. Now, that one's not holy, but those, that one is holy. <laughs> And nobody asked the question about this, but then this, the, only, the only offense that 28-year-old Ben Zimmerman could find is that he was wearing a hood and then people saw outlawing hoods, right? This is just simply me existing becomes problematic. And then somebody says, on hood disease. Somehow that, 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 that there's a disease called hood disease. There is not a disease called hood disease. There's more to the, 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 more the process. But what I wanted to present to you is this idea of what happens to a population that continuously hear this and sees this and becomes responsive to it, you only have but uh, three recourses. One is that you're going to reach out and you're going to implode in the environment. Two is that you're going to implode upon yourself. And the third one is that you're going to move into relative obscurity, internalize and become something unlike yourself in the, in the whole process, right? the identity conversation that we have. That's all that you have, the options that you have. There's nothing that shows you the possibility of what it means to be human, what it means right. to be. And so we have to understand that the, that the, guy, the, 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 the violence that exists and the problem that exists and all these things, and there's this data on, on about this, is a function in some level of people trying to, try, we're trying to find ways to rehumanize themselves. We have to be the voice of those individuals and present treatment modalities that look at this. We have to find ways to be able to stop, and there's, there's a whole lot of data here that we can run through, to be able to understand what does it mean to exist in a victimized state, but also, more importantly, what does it mean to be the children of those who found a way when there was no way? To be one who not only talk about the selling of a, a drug on the street called No Way Out, but people who were able to find a way out. There is something in that narrative that must be expanded upon. Yeah. Yeah. Some talk about the idea of, of narratives and talk about the idea, I love the idea about, about the grand narrative. And the question becomes this idea of counter narrative is that if you are creating the narrative for me to counter, then you control the entire conversation. How about I present to you the idea of a corrective narrative? Yeah. And the corrective narrative su suggests that even though there is this thing that you want to perpetuate as 
as real violence. That I have a plethora of psychologists and social workers, and, and I have psychiatrists who, who are telling me that this is who I am at my core. This is how we treat this. This is how we normalize ourselves. This is what it means to be human from this context. And this context says that the idea of Ubuntu, the title of this year's uh, 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 black psychologist uh, conference is Ubuntu. As a matter of fact, uh, follow up on something else we're doing a trauma informed treatment in the cultural context for a uh, psychiatrist that, that Dr. News is one of the presenters for. So I'm encouraging you all to come out and be a part of that on August 10th. Uh, August 10th uh, here in Crystal, Crystal City. I was not trying to plug that either. I was trying to say something else. I was going. I was going somewhere else. I promise you, I was going somewhere with that. But what does it mean? Uh, uh, to be human. And so what we must recognize is that we must tell our children the idea of, of humanity. And as, as I was, was tell a story, as, as, as Brother Hunter suggested, is, is that the beginning of this idea of human functioning, it does not uh, go back to the Greco-Roman civilization, but it goes back before the Greeks and the Romans, and that people understood how the mind worked thousands of years ago, and that there ain't nothing wrong with your mind right now. Except for, y'all got to get that, because everything was always a set for clause. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that is incorrect with your mind is that you really don't know who you are. You think that you a nigga. You think that you a B. You think that you are, and you keep, and people keep promoting this identity for you. But the reality is that there are things that are greater in you that they see that they don't need you to see because if you saw it, that they, if you saw it, then you would become it and that would be problematic. There you go, that's the truth. Right? That's a real issue. Now, are there organic issues? Yes, there are organic issues and I have folks in my family that no matter how much you tell them who they are, they still do some of the same stuff. I got a, I got a cousin, Nim. In my family. So I'm not saying this solves the problem. What I am saying is that a large majority of the challenges that we find ourselves in, the economic deprivation, uh, all the challenges, are part of a process that makes you lose your mind. You said earlier that idea about, about uh, good food, eating, uh, sleep is what you said. And there's, a, diff 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 there's a, diff a difference between sleeping and resting. I want to be clear about that. Every time you go to sleep, don't mean that you're getting some rest. Catch that one, right? right. Sleep, you said eating, and you said Exercise. If my mind is tormented by things that have dehumanized me, if my trauma is being is being tweeted, if my if my trauma is being on social media, if I'm seeing uh, uh, Alton Sterling, and if I'm seeing Philando uh, Castile, if I'm seeing that happening, then what do you think is going? How am I going to get some sleep when my trauma is being put in place before me? Three things are critical to the human expression. One is understanding your past. That gives you an understanding of, of who you are and what you're all about in the present. So you have agents in the present, and, and that, that's number two. The third thing is having a future. If my only future is that I will be shot down for trying to do the right thing, then I'm going to lose my mind up in here. And so we know then that the idea of mental health professionals, is to get us to think more about this idea of being uh, traumatized. And can't talk about the idea of being post-traumatic, but we talk about the cycles of trauma. And how do you begin to resolve the dynamics of trauma? You begin to resolve them by having mental health services that speaks truth to one's existence. Begins to tell them perpetually who or you are in the beginning. That just like Richard Sherman, <laughs> This was heavy. Yeah. Uh, represented something on, in football that they could not figure out who was this guy. And he said, he started talking, they said he's so articulate. Mm -hmm. But he's a brother who had somebody to plug into him and tell him that yes, you can run. And yes, you can catch. And yes, you can do all those things. And yes, you are a brilliant thinker. You produce things. And this is where your sanity comes from. Mm -hmm. And this is where we have to begin to go. Proper diagnosis is critical. Mm -hmm. we can't, it can't be post-slavery. I talk about persistent and slavery systemic trauma. That's what I call it. Persistent is a pest. Mm -hmm. It's ongoing. 
The reason why I say enslavement is because the ideology of enslavement was about incarceration. It's systemic. It's in everything that we do, and it's traumatic. You don't think it's in everything that we do. Think about this. Black people have to, have to think about what they name their child so their child can navigate a space. That's trauma. Think about what clothes you wear in certain spaces. Trauma. Think about how you wear your hair. That's trauma. Think about how you talk. That's trauma. Foods you eat. That's trauma. Always got to think about something that everybody just, just goes along and say, hey, you just exist. No, it's a traumatic experience because if I name my child the wrong thing, they're going to know that she's black. And you're gonna have some problems. Right? Think about that. That's trauma. And everything. What college did you go to? What degree do you have? Trauma. And I know I'm done. Persistent in state of systemic trauma, it is ongoing, it has not stopped. And how do we treat the trauma when it keeps happening? We have to be able to be truthful about what's going on. That the problem, some things sometimes that you're encountering, is not about you. Not not because you are flawed, but it's happening because you have perfection within you. How do we then begin to, Dr. Banks, bring out that perfection? Dr. Scott, bring it out. How do we bring it out, make it? What do we do in our various spaces, Dr. Lawson? That's a challenge, Dr. Newton, for us to be able to pull these things together. If y'all know the X-ray right here in this room, I'm just calling out. I'm not hearing voices right now. But I do hear voices. And those voices tell me that no matter how bad it gets, no matter how dark it may seem, that we must keep on keeping on because when you are speaking sanity in an insane situation, you may be the one that's questioned. When you prepare yourself to be different, you must also understand that you will be misunderstood. And I have admired the work of Dr. Lawson for a number of years. And I have seen and heard him be misunderstood over a number of years. Dr. <laughs> but it always made sense to me in the end, like that makes a lot of sense. Dr. Newton, Nana, same issue. Baba Leonard Dunstan and the black social workers and all have been speaking the same thing. And We've been trying to make things happen. And they said that, well, if you just reorganize your thinking in a certain way that it validates our existence, we'll give you the money to make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> and we get caught. And then other black folks say, well, you know, uh, we can't, I can't get paid from this. But the reality is that we know the truth. And we move in that truth. Then we will see a new reality. Thank you. Yeah.